Okay, what comes to mind when you hear the term the 60s, as in the 1960s? So that's my question. I'm going to come back to that in a second. Again, thank you for your interest in um, my journey in writing the book, The Weird Apostle. Um, I'm, I'm having a great time with it. It's hard work, but I'm making progress. Right now, I'm on chapter four, in which I'm talking. Uh, the title of chapter four is uh, Paul's Weird Gospel, his weird message. Um, and again, my sort of the premise of the book and the premise of this chapter is that we've made. Uh, we've made Paul uh, look too much like us and his message, his mission, his background, his letters. It was weird stuff in relation to the issues we're facing today. I mean, certainly I do think that his letters contain uh, principles and concepts that, uh, that go, that are timeless. Uh, but I think to really understand this incredible character, without a doubt, one of the top 20 in most influential characters of all time, we have to um, uh, really understand him uh, in his context, in his world, and really try to do the hard work of um, uh, reconstructing what, what the problems were that he was facing in his, his day and try to tear down some of the assumptions that we have um, and, and really kind of reconstruct uh, as best we can uh, what was going on in his time. Okay, so along that line, back to the 60s. Um, the answer to the question is, I think, you know, it, it really depends um, what comes to mind when you hear the 60s really depends on on your your position in life. Uh, for my parents, they were teenagers in the 60s. And so they were, they were like, "Woo, yeah, you know, the 60s, man, it was great and lots of revolution and change and excitement. My grandparents uh, probably would answer that a little bit differently. They're no longer living, but I'm sure they would have a little bit more of a reserved answer. For me, people in my generation and, and after me, I was born in 1975. I mean, I, I was after the 60s. And so I've only heard about it, read about it, you know, heard, heard the folklore. Uh, and then, you know, I'm sure a lot that was, that was uh, of course, accurate and about the 60s. But of, I think what we know is regardless of, of where you stand, the 60s was a time of just tremendous transformation, revolution, a lot of new perspectives uh, that, were, that were forming on thing, a lot of deconstruction, reconstruction. And... Something that um, is not widely known is that actually another area where um, new perspectives were emerging and old assumptions were being questioned, and I would say some kind of revolution was happening, was in the area of the study of Paul. And there was a group of scholars that was uh, emerging during that time that was really that they were really questioning some of the assumptions that we have about Paul and about the problem that his message was seeking to solve. And so um, this, this, this movement within New Testament studies and Pauline studies in particular was called the New Perspective on Paul, which is a little bit of a, it, it's, 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 it's a little bit of a misnomer um, from the standpoint of the new perspective on Paul was actually, I think, a little more aptly described as a new perspective on Judaism. So the assumption was, and still is by many, that ancient Judaism, so the Judaism of Paul's time was characterized by um, sort of self-righteousness and like you had to earn your place uh, in God's family, God's kingdom, the covenants, however you want to put it. You had to, some will say, you know, this works-based, deed-based salvation or righteous standing. Basically, you had to, you had to merit uh, your uh, good standing with God is the, again, the classic uh, assumption that, that has characterized how most people have understood, most Pauline interpreters, most of whom were Christian, um, that's, that's how most people see the problem that Paul's message, that his gospel, his good news was seeking to solve. You know, Paul was, the Judaism of Paul's time was you know, taught that you had to uh, earn your way to heaven or earn your relationship with God by doing enough good deeds and you had to work, 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 do all these good things and then God would love you. And Paul came along and said, nope, it's, it's your relationship with God is based on faith and Jesus' death and resurrection. 
um, is, is, you know, you just put your trust in him and that's, that's all there is to it. Again, that is an oversimplification of, of how some would articulate it, but it, I think it probably, I'm sure many of you can, can relate to that on some level as far as kind of what, you know, is, has been taught and assumed by many. Well, again, the new, the new perspective on Paul in the sixties, again, one of these revolutionary ideas that was swirling during that era was that we've mischaracterized the Judaism of Paul's time. And that actually there's no, there's not, there's not, um, there was no substantial evidence that that's what Jews of that time believed and that that is how we should characterize ancient Judaism. Um, Jews today um, would, would look at that caricature of Judaism and say, we've never believed that. We've never believed you had to work, 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 work to, you know, do all these things. I mean, Jews certainly believe you have to, you know, act righteously and do good deeds, but that, that none of us, you know, can, can do enough to, to, to merit, um, you know, our salvation or our righteous standing with God. So, you know, Judaism today and Judaism in ancient times, again, this is what was coming out in the 1960s was that, it has always been a grace and mercy and compassion based religion as far as one's relationship and standing with God. Okay, so that is what emerged with the new perspective on Paul. So that raises a, a, a big question. So if Paul wasn't addressing and responding to encountering this, this certain caricature an assumption about Judaism, well, then what problem was he solving? What, how do we really understand his good news message, his weird message um, in context, if that, again, was not a problem that would have been swirling in his time? And so that's the question. What was the good news? And so in my book, uh, that's what I'm really trying to tackle is what was the good news? What was Paul's message according to his letters in his context? And uh, my uh, what I present is that uh, Paul's message, his good news, his weird message, if you will, was that because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, um, that made a way for um, for Gentiles to have. Um, to experience um, a relationship with God and a trans and and they could experience a transformation by essentially by trusting in the um, the saving work in the in the atoning work of Jesus. Gentiles, you know, again, I'm, I'm focused on Gentiles because again, Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. His focus was on that. His his gospel was focused on non-Jews, members of the nations. And he was essentially saying, look, a way has been made for Gentiles to be transformed, to have a new nature. They are no longer characterized as pagans, as idolaters, as worshipers of the gods, as sinners, which again, from a Jewish outlook, that's how Jews at that time looked at and categorized Gentiles. That was the, the taxonomy of the day, if you will. Um, and so... Paul's message was that because it, if you take hold of this atoning um, uh, work, this saving work of Jesus, if you're a Gentile, God come, the God's spirit comes to live inside of, of a Gentile and transform them and give them a new nature, which allows them to be holy and thus join the family of of God and the people of God alongside the Jewish people so that Gentiles along with Jews can both cry out uh, and call God Father. And that there could be uh, this, this vision of the prophets, the Jewish prophets could be fulfilled to where you have holy Jews and holy Gentiles um, respecting each other's differences, but walking there, there being shalom between them. So again, that in my opinion is the mystery uh, that Paul referred to in his letters, it was the good news. Gentiles now, by associating and being transformed through the death and resurrection of Jesus, can join the family of God and have this direct connection 
into God's family. They can be adopted into the family because of that, uh, that saving act of Jesus. So I hope that all made sense. Uh, and, and it's a really powerful, um, it's a powerful idea, huge idea. But uh, again, it was that idea as far as what problem Paul solved and the nature of his message is very different than I think how his message has typically been framed. So that's what I'm trying to, uh, to present in my book. Again, thanks for your interest uh, in uh, what I'm working on, making progress. And um, I hope everyone is well and I'll keep you posted. Thanks.